Welcome to the Skeptic Zone, the podcast from Australia for science and reason. Hello and welcome to the Skeptic Zone, episode number 452 for the 18th of June 2017. Richard Saunders here with you from Sydney, Australia. It's uh, nice weather, but I'm under the weather. I'm under the nice weather. Actually, there's a cloud hanging over me. Yes, I caught a cold or a flu, or not a flu, an infectiony sort of coldy sort of chesty sort of generally unpleasant sort of thing. But luckily, I was able to do some recording for the Skeptic Zone earlier in the week before I felt uh, not so good. So if I sound a little bit under the weather now, you'll understand why. But never mind, what's coming up on this week's episode of The Skeptic Zone? We're going to have a story, kicking off with a story about a good friend of ours, Dr. Ken Harvey, who just uh, received an honour in the Queen's Birthday Honours list. Good on you, Ken. Find out what that honour is and why. Why a sceptic would get an honour. Are uh, Coming up to start The Skeptic Zone. Following that, it's Brouhaha Science from... Australia Science TV, this week with Casey Harrigan, who we interviewed a couple of weeks ago on The Skeptic Zone. This week, Casey's going to be looking at alcohol. I don't think I would want to drink right now. Maybe when I get better. Brouhaha Science coming up a bit later on. Then we have a segment from my late night radio uh, uh, appearances here in Australia with Mike Williams. This one dates back a few weeks, but I had a lot of positive comment on this when people heard it online or uh, listened to it live, so I thought I would replay it on The Skeptic Zone. This is me chatting about cold reading. And it comes up, it's funny how often cold reading comes up, largely because it is the the tag, the hook, it is the, uh, the end process of many things from astrology to palmistry to uh, face reading, uh, even in, in certain health situations. It's amazing how often cold reading techniques come up. So my chat to Mike Williams, taken from the radio, all about cold reading. Then to round off the show, it's Susan Gobeck from Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia. Susan's going to be, uh, she's on a road trip. She starts off her report driving through California. She's going to tell us about some of the highlights of the recent Skeptical meeting in California, where uh, skeptics got together for a one-day convention. But she's actually on her way to the premiere of Principles of Curiosity, the new skeptical, well, critical thinking documentary. And she interviews some of the people who are at the uh, premiere to see what they think of Principles of Curiosity. I've had a look at this movie myself, Brian Dunning has done a wonderful job, and of course, all the people he uh, uh, worked with, uh, the other people involved in production and writing and so on. And a particular mention to uh, Lee Sanders, who did the music, and you'll hear some of them. Oh, here's some of the music now, in fact. rich music uh, Lee Sanders does uh, lots of um, award winning music for TV in uh, California so something to look forward to Principles of Curiosity see what the audience think to round off the Skeptic Zone I'm not going to talk much longer because uh, I've got to get better very quickly tomorrow I'm on a flight to uh, to San Francisco oh boy I wonder what medicine I can take hmm well I won't I won't to talk much longer. In fact, I'll talk long enough to tell you I'm going to run downstairs and have some chicken soup. Just chicken soup, chicken soup, chicken soup. An oldie but a goodie. Ah, while I do that and try to get better, I hope you enjoy The Skeptic Zone. Once again, we head to the website of Australian Skeptics, skeptics skeptics.com.au, where we read a report by Tim Mendham, published on the 14th of June 2017. 
Queen's Birthday Honor for Ken Harvey. Dr. Ken Harvey, one of Australia's leading campaigners against pseudomedicine, has been honored with a member, AM, in the General Division of the Order of Australia in the recent Queen's Birthday Honours list. Harvey is well known to skeptics for his ongoing battle, both through and with the Therapeutics Goods Administration, over claims made by alt-med companies in their advertising and promotional materials. His complaints have all been upheld upon investigation. The birthday honour was given, quote, for significant service to community health and the pharmaceutical industry through roles in developing guidelines for the ethical use of antibiotics, end quote. Harvey told Australian Doctor, quote, It's a touch unusual, I guess. I think quite a few of my colleagues would be surprised to hear that I made a contribution to the pharmaceutical industry, end quote. The industry itself has described him as an agitator, a tag he readily accepted, along with Choice magazine describing him positively as a, quote, serial complainer, end quote. Harvey is a previous winner of several awards from Australian skeptics, including the Thornet Award for Promotion of Reason in 2011, Life Membership in 2013, and joint winner with Mal Vickers of Skeptic of the Year, in 2016. Choice named Harvey its consumer champion for 2012, and he was also the recipient of a 2016 ANZUS medal for the Australian and New Zealand Association for the Advancement of Science. The medal is awarded annually for services for the advancement of science. In 2011, the Sensor Slim Diet product company took him to court in a slap suit because of his strong criticism of the product through the TGA's Complaint Resolution Panel. Australian Skeptics Inc. organised a public fund-raising exercise to cover his legal expenses. He won the case. In 2014, he resigned his position as Adjunct Associate Professor in La Trobe University School of Public Health over a proposed deal between the university and supplements company Swiss Wellness. He is now Associate Professor, School of Public Health and Preventative Medicine at Monash University. For the AM, he has been honoured for his leading role in improving antibiotic prescribing in Australia. In the late 1970s, he was among a group of doctors working in Melbourne's teaching hospitals, increasingly concerned about the incidence of antibiotic-resistant microorganisms and inappropriate prescribing. It led to the creation of a working party which produced what Harvey describes as a, quote, slim booklet, end quote, of guidelines. Nearly 40 years later, the guidelines have been through 15 editions running to 30 chapters, with antibiotics and their continuing misuse recognized across the medical profession as a global concern. He said he was, quote, pleased and honored, end quote, to be given the award. Quote, it's good to know you have made a difference, end quote. And congratulations indeed, Dr. Ken Harvey, one of Australia's tireless campaigners for science and reason. And that story comes to us from the Australian Skeptics website, skeptics.com.au. Stock. Всем привет! Hey, Salihu. Guys, guys, I just had the most amazing experience. What experience, Andras? Andras, have you been to the pub? I told you not to hang out with Marsh. You know he was blessed by Peter Popov. <laughs> no, Yelena, I'm not talking about psychics. It was a real ESP experience. Uh, you have been to the pub. Either that or you've been smoking something. No, Pontus. The ESP is the European Skeptics Podcast. It's the most amazing thing. You get to know so much about skeptics and their activities across Europe. You know, events, hot topics, and interviews with lots of interesting people. Oh, wow, cool. By the way, Pontus, you just committed the false dichotomy fallacy. I guess that means I'm really wrong. Yep. And you can even learn about those fallacies on the show and hear about people spreading silly ideas. 
You should really check it out. It's the ESP, the European Skeptics Podcast. It's on every week. All right. So where can I get this ESP experience? It sounds good. You can go online at theesp.eu, follow it on Twitter at espodcast underscore eu, or like the podcast on Facebook. Oh, and you can also contact the show by sending them an email to info at theesp.eu. And if you want to subscribe, do a quick search for the European Skeptic Podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, or Stitcher. I don't know how you can believe. And now, direct from the cafe at Australia's Science Channel, it's Bruhaha with Casey Harrigan. Cheers, the kind and slancha. Doesn't matter where you are, there's nothing quite like a cleansing ale. But too much alcohol might just cleanse you of your cognitive capabilities. Research from the UK has shown a connection between two or three alcohol units a day and a decrease in brain power and memory. Here we go again, right? Wasn't red wine good for us just a second ago? Next thing you know, dark chocolate's going to be on the hit list again. It might feel like scientists are constantly changing their minds. But studies can seem to contradict each other because the frame of reference is too big. Zoom into the heart, and a glass of wine might be helpful. Meanwhile, over in your brain, your white matter's at risk. This particular study was observational. The scientists were quick to call for further research to actually show cause and effect. But when I was looking into this story, I found a lot more studies showing negative effects of drinking on our bodies and society. There might be some pros, but there are an awful lot of cons. For more brouhaha and Australian science, head for www.australiascience.tv. G'day, this is Dr. Carl, Carl Krasinski, proud to be a sceptic, and you can find out more about me at drcarl.com and get lots of free stuff there as well. Welcome back, everyone. Great to have your company. Wherever you may be listening to the program, you're with Mike Williams right across the Macquarie Media Network at stations. Well, it's that time once again for our uh, weekend reality through the uh, the eyes and research of Skeptics Australia. Always interesting to catch up and welcome Mr. Richard Saunders. And uh, I think he's there now. Good morning, Richard. Welcome in. Good morning, Mike. Hello again. And uh, same to you, mate. Always good to look, for- look forward to this segment. I really do. Hey, look, I see where this week we're looking at cold reading and hot reading. I mean, yeah. this has got nothing to do with Goldilocks, has it? Not re- well, <laughs> I've got to wonder. <laughs> um, okay, now, many people who talk to us or come to us or wonder about us uh, have gone themselves to visit a psychic oh, or yes. a palm reader or someone who does the tarot, uh, the, the tarot cards or an astrologer. Yeah. There's also something called face reading, there's tea leaf reading, coffee reading, the list goes on and on and on. But when we boil it down and see what's really going on, in the far the majority of cases, uh, the, what's going on is something called cold reading. This is a psychological process, which means that somebody appears to read you cold. In other words, cold, you're just off the street, you've never met them before, and yet somebody, a psychic or whatever, can appear to know all sorts of things about you. So there is a bit of an art in this, uh, obviously from experience and just by doing it over and over again, people can get into this mode and sort of catch you off guard or look at you and say blah, 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 and you go, oh, how did you know that? Exactly, and w- what we must remember is that there are basically two types of people who go to see psychics. The first type are people who already believe in the psychic they're going to see, oh, or the tarot card reader or yeah, the astrologer. That's an interesting point you make, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're sold. They're sold straight away, and what they will do in a reading is they will help the the psychic. They will bend the psychic's uh, words to make them fit. They will answer questions to make it very real for them, because they already believe. The second type of people who go to see psychics are people like me. 
for research purposes. Uh -huh. uh, and I know the psychological interplay which is going on. And I think a couple of weeks ago we were talking about spoon bending. When you know how spoon bending the trick works and yeah. you see it, you're not that impressed because you know, you know what, what's really happening. Well, it's the same with this, this psychic reading. Whenever I see it, since I know the psychology behind it and, and how powerful the words can be, I can be interested in it and I can give psychics full marks for using interesting techniques, but I'm certainly not uh, swayed or convinced by it. No. All right. Well, look, let's go through a couple of mm. these uh, uh, bits and pieces here. The Barnum effect, uh, this is where you can say general things that appear to be personal. Yeah, this, this happens a lot. Uh, and this is named after the famous circus promoter, Barnum. I, I thought it might have yeah. had something to do with that. And yeah. he said he, want, he had something for everybody, something to please everybody. And uh, this happens quite a lot in, in these so-called psychic readings or tarot card readings or something. Uh, that They'll spread the cards out in front of you or they'll examine your star chart or look into the palm of your hand and say, oh, look at this line here. You've got a really strong desire to be liked, I feel, but sometimes you feel you're rejected. Now, this is something a lot of people can relate to, of course. Yeah. But if, uh, if I say, if you're already a believer, then you're going to say, oh, that's amazing. Yes, yeah, you're absolutely right, and, and on it goes. Um, that's a very interesting one to look up. If anybody uh, wants to Google the Barnum effect, you can learn lots about uh, psychic readings by looking at that. Very interesting. And what about the rainbow ruse? Tell yeah. us about this. This is another similar one. You're sitting there and somebody's chatting to you. They're looking at your palm or they say, oh, the, here's the ace of swords. This card's coming up. And they'll look at you and you say, they'll say something like, you know, this, this tells me that you, you can be the life of the party, can't you? You can be really interesting and people can find you interesting. But at other times, you like to be quiet and just, just by yourself. It's called the Rainbow Rouges because you've just told somebody they have both sides of a characteristic <laughs> and everything in between. Yes. And uh, the, the response, you know, cheeky skeptics might say to that is, oh, really, do I have long hair and short hair too at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> but one, you must remember, this is all done when this, this reading is going on. And if you're already convinced, all these things will make sense to you and you will look to make things like that... Um, to, to make them fit your personality yeah, and what sure. you're getting out of it. Yeah. It's almost like reading the star signs. We, uh, we talked last week with Tim about oh, star yeah. signs. And you can read into, you know, a paragraph that's just been written off the top of the head or whatever they yeah. do. And uh, you can say, oh, that's me. Of course I'm about to go into that. I'm about to make a decision. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? it, it that's the, it's the psychology of it. Uh, there are great books about the subject. There's an, uh, uh, the best book I've ever written is called The Full facts book on cold reading and you can get that on on the internet ah. and it goes through uh, it's a very thick book and it teaches you all about it. Uh, it what an interesting area of research it is yeah it sounds it too um what about the psychic credits mm. love this this happens quite a lot because you can imagine somebody in my position i've seen many examples of, of psychic readings people being read i've gone to lots of live shows of psychics and things like this this is where the psychic will try to flatter you a little bit and they'll look at the palm or they'll look into your eyes or they'll read your tea leaves or it, that, it doesn't matter. That's all just props. Uh, and they'll say, oh, that's interesting. You know, I think that you have a little bit of psychic power yourself. Did you know that? Has ever, anybody ever said to you that you could be a little bit psychic? Yes, they this, have. Yes, this is very common. And what they'll say or they'll think, oh, well, the last psychic I went to also said the same thing, so it must be true. <laughs> and then you feel a bit special. Imagine somebody who you think has psychic powers telling you that you also have these, you know, have hidden gifts or whatever. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're, you, you're quite flattered by it. You feel quite special. Uh, it'll probably make you uh, believe even more. But it's part of the psychology of this whole area. It's so interesting. It really is. The, the grass is greener, as they often say, on the other yeah. side of the fence. Perhaps. Yeah. Well, this is great because this is sort of like another Barnum statement. When somebody comes in for a reading, you tell them that, ah, oh, you're a very interesting person. I'm looking into your, your tarot card here or the palm of your hand. Now, I know you live in the city, but there are so many times you just long to live in the country. Whatever the opposite is. If they're from the country, you might say, you know, you feel drawn to the city sometimes. Yes. Or another 
variation of this is you'll say to the person, oh, this is very interesting. I, I can tell by this line here on your hand that you often wish you lived in another time period. You've thought about it, haven't you? <laughs> Most people will nod their heads, me included. Yes. It's a common thing yeah. for us to speculate and wonder about living in another time period. I would have been so much more happier if I lived in the 1920s or something like that. And again, the person being read will think, this psychic is amazing. How could they have possibly known this is very personal? And, and on it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many tricks. <laughs> so many tricks. Yeah. And simply, uh, I've heard of this before, just asking questions. That's the other thing here, right? Absolutely. Now, this is really important, and it's something a lot of people don't realize is happening. If they go for a psychic reading... Most of the time, if people, if the psychic isn't just using Barnum statements, they'll simply ask you, um, oh, dearie, I'm, I'm getting an impression now the spirits are talking to me. Who's this, who's, who's, who used to drive the, the blue car? Now, they're just asking you a question. Christian, they're just asking yeah. you, do you know anybody in your, your family or your history or past or whatever, your friends who drives the blue car? That's a straight, boring question. They're fishing. So they're hoping that the, the odds or, or the, the, you know, would pan out that maybe someone did have a blue card. Yeah, but here's the trick. Even if they don't, there's lots of ways the psychic can get out of it. They can say, no, if you say, nobody, blue, nobody, my dad, my uncles, nobody I know drives a blue car, they say, well, watch out for a blue car in your future. It'll be very important. <laughs> you see how I just proved that I'm still psychic no matter what the person yeah, says? Yeah, of course. They'd, and that yeah. trick can, yeah. is Many, 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 many var uh, variations. Yeah. But I'll just ask you, uh, did you have a little dog when you were growing up? You say, yes. And they say, yes, I thought you did. I'm getting this impression. Did you have a little dog when you were growing up? No, I didn't. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> no matter what you say, the psychic can twist it to make it look like they're, they're psychic. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, it's funny. And just talking about the blue card, the next, the next day the person gets pulled up by the coppers. <laughs> <laughs> but a blue car can be a blue motorbike or a motorbike oh, or a oh. red car oh, okay. it'll, it, 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 the variations are amazing <laughs> yeah, that's funny isn't it and what about I, I know more about you than you do yourself oh this is, a, this is an excellent one and this is a way a psychic can really get out of a spot so if I say to somebody oh I'm, I'm, I'm uh, here the, the, the stars are telling me this or whatever ah now who, who is it in your family used to play the piano on stage wow this is amazing i'm getting this very strong and you scratch your head and you're yeah. thinking hard and you have to look look i'm really so, sorry i nobody in my family or my grandmothers or anything they played the piano on, on stage and the psychic will look at the person and say no no this is this is true they're telling me this i tell you what you go home and ask your mum or your family and i bet you'll find somebody who played the piano on stage now it looks like the psychic knows so much about you that you don't even know about this piano player. Mm -hmm. And by the time you've gone home to check, the reading's over anyway and you've paid your money. Right. So it doesn't matter <laughs> if they've played. <laughs> but if you do, if you do go back to your parents or your grandmother or your aunts and uncles and you find some relative or some obscure relation who actually did play the piano on stage, mm -hmm. you're absolutely blown away. Yeah. But again, it just doesn't matter. The reading's over, you've paid your money, and it appears the psychic knows more about you than they really do. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. And, and this hot reading, of course, now, I, I've seen this on television shows yeah. where the person actually has a bit of a staff and they can check in to the person about to come and have their yeah. palm read or whatever, and, yeah. and they have all the information before they even start. Yeah, this doesn't happen as often as... as uh, cynics would like to believe. Now, the Australian skeptics have researched this for many years, and we know that most people who think that they're, uh, who claim to be psychic actually think they are, and they don't cheat in that respect. They, oh. You know, they're honest, upfront people. They just happen to think that they have magical powers. Right. A small minority of people are quite happy to get information before the reading and then make it look like they've got magical uh, sources. Yeah. These days, a lot of information comes from Facebook. Of course, you, you yes. You can get a lot of information sure. about people's uh, relatives That's or their job point, yeah. or their likes, their dislikes off Facebook. Yeah. Uh, some, in some situations, uh, some situations, uh, if it's a live psychic show, for example, come tonight and see Madame X on stage giving live readings from the from the uh, to the audience. 
in some situations, we know this has happened. People have been milling around before the show, or you know, in, in anticipation, and someone will come up and say, "Oh, I'm, I'm here to, to contact my dear departed grandmother. Who are you? What do you hope to get out of tonight?" And you get to chatting. Well, sometimes those people are agents of the psychic, ah. and they're gathering information. They go back, they feel the psychic in, and then the, the show starts, and somehow this psychic amazingly knows all these details. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, but dear. don't forget, I mean, um, there are con men and con women in all walks of life. Yeah, sure. So uh, they uh, do appear here. Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. Have you ever actually come close to someone who may have some sort of mystical powers at all? Not in my experience, no. uh, but then again, what I'm telling you now is, is a minute fraction oh, of Oh, sure. The, of Just the, the mechanics behind it gained. all. Yeah. yeah. So when I see one, I, I can quickly know the, the process. You know, it's unfolding in front of me. Yes. If you don't know the process, of course you won't see it. You won't see the, the connections and the interplay and the, and the words we've been discussing today, all these little techniques. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Look, someone who might be heading off after this chat we've just had, if they're still daring to head off into, into somewhere and, and have their palm read or sort of see a psychic, what, what should they look out for? All right. The, the best thing they can do is uh, get the psychic, and most will, will be happy with this, is record the reading. Most, most modern smartphones now have little recording yes. buttons and apps and things. Yep. Just set it down beside and you ask, is it all right if I record this? And usually that's no problem, that's fine. Uh, during the reading itself, try to be aware of how many questions the psychic is asking you. Now, if they're a psychic, they should be telling you things, not asking you. Right. I mean, I, I, you, anybody can sit down with me and I can ask them questions and gain information that way. That's not, psych that's not psychic, that's just having a chat. So bear in mind, too, that you should get what you pay for. If you're paying for a psychic reading, then this is consumer affairs. That's what you should get. You shouldn't get psychological tricks. You should get what you paid for. Correct. The next thing to do is, after it's all over, uh, go home, write down what you remember without listening to the recording, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, give it a week. Just let, let it sit in the back of your mind, then listen to the recording and make a note of all the times the psychic asks questions and all the times they, have, they say something that isn't true. You don't have a, a, an auntie with an initial W or something like right, that. Yeah. And you, you might start then to get a better understanding of the psychology and what's really going on. Very interesting. Mm. Richard Saunders, thank you once again. Now, if people want to go to your site, just tell us that website again. Yeah, it's skeptics.com.au and we spell it with SK not SC for, for very long reasons yes. and, and the exciting news is that um, when you're there you can see that our convention Skepticon is coming up in November and you can uh, even buy tickets for that right now that's uh, the 18th and 19th of November here in Sydney a giant international skeptical convention and you've got some people coming in obviously from right around the world to yeah, do their thing we do and but, in, but not to forget the local stars like uh, Dr. Carl Krasniewski is going to be one of our speakers. Oh. And the very popular media uh, commentator, Dr. Brad Mackay, is going to be there and lots of other people to be announced in the next few months. So Fantastic. It's all there. Oh, well, you can remind us every time you come on the program. Hey, thanks, Richard. Take it easy. Hi, this is Ben Radford, and this is Pasquale Romero from the Squaring the Strange podcast. Every week, my co-host and I cast a skeptical eye on a different topic. Monsters, ghosts, demons, mysteries, and even current events are dissected and discussed with a fun, unscripted, and skeptical take that you're sure to enjoy. Find us at squaringthestrange.com, iTunes, or on your favorite podcast platform. Listeners, this is Susan Gerbig from the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia Project. I'm driving to Los Angeles, California, from my home in Salinas, California. So I've got about another four-hour drive ahead of me, and I wanted to say hello to everyone and give you a quick update 
on Skeptical that was held in Berkeley this last Sunday, a couple days ago. It was a terrific time. It looked like it pretty much sold out. Probably 250 people were there, and it was it was pretty pretty full. I mean, it's difficult to find a seat. Uh, we had great lectures from people like Eugenie Scott, whom, of course, all Skeptic Zone listeners know. Uh, she talked about race and uh, pseudoscience of race. Uh, how do we know what a race is and how is that classified? It's quite interesting. I learned a lot. Uh, we also heard from Marty Klein on pornography, and we had a great uh, uh, lecture by Andrew Fracknoid. He talked to us about the eclipse that's going to be happening in the USA in August. I'm going to be going up to Oregon area to see it, and he talked to us about um, how to actually look at the eclipse, and he talked to us about how crazy it's going to be, because the media hasn't really hyped it up yet, but there's going to be a U.S. postage stamp that's coming out June 20th, and it's going to be a unique stamp that where you touch it with your thumb, it's going to, it's going to change from a black circle to a picture of the moon when you touch it. And once that hits the media, he said people are going to go crazy for the eclipse. So if you haven't already booked, you probably will find that you are not going to be able to book transportation, hotels, and so on. It's going to be uh, crazy. He said that the areas of the United States that it's going that the eclipse can be seen in are mostly rural areas and people living within a 100 mile path of the eclipse are probably going to get up one day and say, hey, that's only 75 miles away or 50 miles away, let's go. And they're all going to get in their cars and they're going to go towards the path of the eclipse and it's going to be crazy because there's not, the roads are not built for traveling like that. The infrastructure is not there. He says there's not going to be enough bathrooms and it's going to be insane. So I'm planning on going with friends and I have my hotel booked at the university uh, in Oregon. We're staying in dorms, but we're going to leave really early and plan on staying late and pack food and water and just assume we'll be stuck in gridlock. But, um, That's just the way it is. I want to see this eclipse. Also at the conference in Skeptical, we had Brian Dunning. And Brian Dunning is always a joy to to listen to. His lecture this time was on water spouts. And um, it was so much more than water spouts as well. It was a great science and pseudoscience talk. It felt like I was re-listening to many of his episodes and he tied it all up with um, what's the harm in believing in pseudoscience with Timothy McVeigh who bombed the Oklahoma FBI building uh, many years ago that you might remember and he had a lot of beliefs in conspiracies. So fascinating talk as usual. I love to hear Brian Denning whenever I can. In fact, I'm on my way to Los Angeles because I'm going to attend Brian Denning's release of the movie that he's been working on, Principles of Curiosity. Um, It is a 45-minute movie that will be released free of charge. It's going to have teacher notes. It is intentionally 45 minutes so that it can be used in a schoolroom setting. Going back to Skeptical, I have uploaded to my YouTube channel, Susan Gerbic, quite a few videos from the event, if you're interested in seeing them. They're not high quality, but the audio is good, and you can see the slides, and it might be some time before the actual venue, Skeptical, comes out with the lectures. So... Why don't you give mine a look when you get a chance at Susan Gerbic on YouTube. And I've been listening to quite a bit of Skeptic Zone. In fact, I rarely ever miss a Skeptic Zone episode. 
I am super jealous of all the ghost of all the ghost hunts that you all do. I'm thrilled to vicariously listen to Richard and crew go to Skeptics in the Pub in Sydney, as well as to different venues. Uh, the Mind Body Wallet is always one of my favorite. Um, uh, events that um, I get to go through and, and attend with you all. So from Salinas, California, on route to L.A., I am Susan Gerbig, and I hope to see you all soon. Thanks. So I'm here with Brian Dunning Skeptoid. from Skeptoid.com. Brian. What do you think? What am I thinking? I'm thinking this was a great night. I was so pleased at the reactions in the crowd. It was just like I'm I've been stretched so thin and pulled in so many directions and having it all come together tonight and it just worked and it was great and people seem to enjoy it. I'm just I'm just so thrilled. I have nothing to say because my brain is so exploded. Brian Hart, what did you think? I thought it was great. Uh, again, I agree with Ross. The production values were excellent. The high definition, the uh, aerial footage, the drone shots, beautiful. And the script was really tight. Nice, tight 40 minutes of skepticism. Very much enjoyed. Great, great, great animation. What are the three C's? Challenge. Challenge. And uh, let's see. Yeah, Consider. So and then. Consider and conclusion. Conclusion. Right. Conclusion. Yeah. Conclusion. We got it. See, we learned. We learned, we learned. We learned. Never heard those things. Thank you guys. To watch the movie and download the educational notes, head for principlesofcuriosity.com. The wait is over. Tickets are now available for Skepticon the 2017 Australian Skeptics National Convention. The skeptical highlight of the year, our 33rd convention is being organized by Think Inc. and will be held on November the 18th and 19th, 2017 at the City Recital Hall, Angel Place, Sydney. This promises to be a great event with speakers including science media star Dr. Carl, Kruzelniski, of course, astronomer Alan Duffy, YouTube super debunker Captain Disillusion, comedian and MC Lawrence Lung, former naturopath and now critic of old med Brit Hermes, doctor and TV personality Dr. Brad Mackay, award-winning documentary maker Sonia Pemberton, Walkley award-winning journalist Kathy Marks, and Dr. Come magician Dr. Viram Sharma. More great speakers will be announced soon, as well as news of the convention dinner on the night of Saturday the 18th of November. Single day and full weekend tickets are available. Skepticonaustralia.org.au Thank you for listening to The Skeptic Zone. Now on the next show, I hope to bring you some interviews from California, from San Francisco... I might even be able to um, score an interview with my dear friend Eugenie Scott. Uh, and possibly, I hope to find myself at the Exploratorium in, uh, in San Francisco. Uh, we'll see what we can do about that. But now it's time for me not to run downstairs anymore. I'm going to run to bed. That's it. Lights out. Bedtime. And try to rest up for my flight tomorrow. And until next week, this is Richard Saunders signing off from Sydney, Australia. You've been listening to the Skeptic Zone podcast. Visit our website at www.skepticzone.tv for contacts, an archive of all episodes since 2008, and our online store. Please support the Skeptic Zone by following us on Twitter at Skeptic Zone, liking us on Facebook, and leaving a review on iTunes. You can also show your support by subscribing via PayPal for as little as 99 cents a week. The Skeptic Zone is an independent production. The views and opinions expressed on The Skeptic Zone are not necessarily those of Australian Skeptics Inc. or any other skeptical organisations.